Now today we're looking at a rear vehicle speed sensor, trouble code 1706. Typically your vehicle may have trouble shifting from first into second gear or you may have torque binding which is something I showed maybe two episodes ago on how to test it, the symptoms and so forth. So today I'll show you where this lives, how to test that it's getting power and ultimately how to replace it. Now finding the sensor really is not too difficult. Number one, you can do a web search specifically for your vehicle and very often you'll find diagrams showing where the sensor lives or just really look up the part online on what it looks like and then match that up to your vehicle. So we know it lives on the transmission. So obviously we need to get access to the transmission. So we need to lift up the vehicle. Now if you've never done that, a very good jacking point is the front cross member that's right slap in the middle of the vehicle. As you can see, just to make this easy, I have all four wheels off the ground, and you can jack up the rear from, in this case, from the rear differential. So let's get over to the transmission, and just look at the transmission. Number one, look for the wiring. Nothing there looks like the sensor. Just look around, look around, look around, and right here matches up what this sensor looks like. Now because this is exposed to the elements, this fastener was very, very rusted down. This is me cleaning this after roughly 10 minutes. Now I started with a wire brush, and that did help somewhat, but really ultimately I just moved over to a Dremel and just cleaned off all of the rust and debris on this fastener. Don't forget, if this, if this strips on you, removing this sensor now becomes a lot harder. Now the other thing you may have issue is the working room. There's not a lot of working room. So what I had to use is an offset wrench. This gave me the leverage. I cannot even fit a quarter inch ratchet in here. That's how tight this is. So I used up. As you can see, look at the play on here though. A lot of play. And just remove it. Now before I remove the fastener, right here, you have the harness connector. And there's a tab where my thumb is. Press down on the tab and pull on the body. Okay, don't pull from the wire, pull from the body. And we can actually test if power is getting to the harness, I'm sorry, if power is getting to the sensor. Now the reason why that's important is the sensor can be perfectly fine, but maybe you have a wiring issue. So I'll show you how you can do that in, in a second. But let's just quickly remove this since we're here. Okay, now there's an O-ring that keeps this in place. In other words, I can't pull it out that easily. So what I'm doing is rotating and pulling at the same time. It takes quite a bit of effort. It is coming out slowly. It's got to take your time. It may be tempted to use a flathead screwdriver. I wouldn't because if this cracks, well, I guess you could, but if it's not good. But nonetheless, try to get it out by hand. And there you go. So let's first just also check that power is getting to this harness connector. Let me show you how you can do that. So the first thing we need to do is just turn on the ignition key. Don't crank the car. Just turn on the ignition key. Now this is a digital multimeter. Do not be intimidated by these. Very, very easy to use. 15 to 20 bucks off Amazon. Again, I'll have links in the description box below. So what we need is the volts DC setting. And every multimeter has two leads, a black and a red lead. Black is your ground, red goes to the harness connector. Now to make this easy, I'm using alligator clips. And then I have a paper clip. So in other words, let me back up. So you have the red lead from the multimeter. I just have that directly to an alligator clip. And that wire goes directly to the harness connector. Okay, and that's again, just a paper clip that's in the harness connector. So the red lead is hooked up. And then the black is ground. Ground is any good metal point. So right here is perfect. Take a look at the multimeter, and we have voltage. So that verifies that the wiring is good. If I remove this ground, nothing, okay? Now once I touch the exhaust, we have power. So you just want to verify that the wiring is in good shape, because if it is not, then you have to repair that issue before you can uh, tackle this job, okay? I placed some oil here on the O-ring and now you just simply reinstall the sensor into the vehicle. Now the other thing you may want to do is 
if you haven't done it in a while, flush your transmission fluid. Since you're here, always a good idea, especially if you're overdue, replacing it. Okay, grab the fastener. So as you can see, it really is not a difficult job. The hardest part is really, in my case, was just cleaning off this fastener. I took a good 20 minutes. Just cleaning it and making sure that it won't strip. And when you tighten down the fastener, don't over torque it because you don't want the, uh, the plastic to crack on you. So nice and easy. That's plenty. Reinstall the harness connector and that's it. So that takes care of that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.